वेलकम एवरी वन माई सेल्फ डी एस मुंडे वर्किंग एज असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ प्रोसेसिंग एंड फूड इंजिनिअरिंग के के वाघ कॉलेज ऑफ ॲग्रिकल्चरल इंजिनिअरिंग अँड टेक्नॉलॉजी नाशिक सो इन दिस व्हिडिओ लेक्चर वी विल स्टडी अबाउट द प्रोसेस फ्लो चार्ट्स सो दिस प्रोसेस फ्लो चार्ट्स टॉपिक विल बी कवर्ड इन फोर व्हिडिओ लेक्चर्स इन द फर्स्ट और इन दिस पर्टिक्युलर व्हिडिओ लेक्चर वी विल स्टडी अबाउट द प्रोसेस फ्लो चार्ट ऑफ बटर सो स्टार्टिंग विथ द कंटेंट सो इन दिस व्हिडिओ लेक्चर्स वी विल स्टडी दिस व्हेरियस फ्लो चार्ट लाईक बटर मॅन्युफॅक्चरिंग घी और बटर ऑइल प्रोसेस फ्लो चार्ट योगट फ्लो चार्ट प्रोसेस फ्लो चार्ट फॉर पनीर दे प्रोसेस फ्लो चार्ट फॉर मिल्क पाउडर दॅट इज ड्राईड मिल्क प्रोडक्ट्स देन आईस्क्रीम अँड द लास्ट वन इज द चीज सो ऑल दीज टॉपिक्स और फ्लो चार्ट विल बी कवर्ड इन फोर व्हिडिओ लेक्चर्स स्टार्टिंग विथ द बटर सो बिफोर गोईंग टू स्टडी द डेफिनेशन of butter we will go through some introduction about the butter so butter leads amongst the milk products manufactured in developed dairying countries of the world today the world's recorded annual butter production in 1916 has been estimated to have been 5584000 tons and india's contribution in the same was 448000 tons that is 8% of the world's total the production of creamery butter in india in 1966 was estimated to have been about 6.3% of the total milk production and 11.3% of the milk used for for the manufacture of dairy products this butter serves as the balance wheel of the dairy industry surplus milk is converted into butter while during times of scarcity the milk intended for butter making is used for more essential products so also we will see the history of butter in a short The art of butter making has a long history. The manufacture of creamery butter has been confined to the colder regions of the world where gravity creaming has been successful. References to butter are found in the Old Testament. In the past butter was an article article of commerce and sign of wealth up to the middle of the 19th century factory butter making was unknown most butter was made on the farm from cream obtained by gravity creaming however with the development of the centrifugal cream separator fat test butter churns artificial refrigeration etc factory butter making developed rapidly so now starting with the definition of butter so butter may be defined as a fat concentrate which is obtained by churning cream gathering the fat into a compact mass and then working it so the definition of butter according to the prevention of food adulteration rules that is pep rules 1976 table or creamery butter is the product obtained from cow or buffalo milk or a combination thereof or from cream or curd obtained from cow or buffalo milk or combination thereof with or without the addition of common salt and annatto or carotene as coloring matter also this butter should be free from other animal fats wax and mineral oils vegetable oils and fats no preservatives except common salt and no coloring matter except annatto 
or carotene may be added. So this creamery or table butter should contain not less than 80% by weight milk fat. Also not more than 1.5% by weight curd and not more than 3% by weight of common salt. Diacetyl may be added as a flavoring agent in the butter but if so used the total content of it must not exceed 4 ppm. Calcium hydroxide, sodium bicarbonate, sodium polyphosphate may be added but must not exceed the weight of butter as a whole by more than 0.2%. So before going the going to study the process flow chart of manufacturing of butter, we will see the classification of butter. So many kinds of butter are to be found in the market. These differ with the type of cream from which they are made and with variations in the manufacturing process. Unless specifically specifically mentioned the different kinds of butter may or may not have been salted. A brief description of several types of butter is given in this particular slide. So the first type of butter is pasteurized cream butter. So it is made usually from pasteurized sweet cream such butter usually has a milder, milder flavor than that made from similar cream not pasteurized. The next one is the ripened cream butter. It is made from cream in which a pleasant aroma, pleasant delicate aroma has been developed before churning by ripening. The ripening means inoculating the cream with a butter culture and holding it at a desired temperature. So properly made ripened cream butter has a delicate flavor which is sometimes referred to as real butter flavor. So unripened cream butter. Unripened cream butter made from unripened cream in which starter culture or butter culture is not added. The flavor of such butter is usually mild. Then salted butter. Butter to which salt is added is called as salted butter. Unsalted butter, it contains no added salt. Then sweet cream butter. In this case, the acidity of the churn cream does not exceed 0.20% So sour cream butter in this class of butter the butter is made from cream which has more than 0.20% acidity fresh butter such butter has not undergone cold storage usually fresh butter is not kept for more than 3 weeks then cold storage butter here it has been stored at a temperature of about minus 18 degree celsius for some time generally cold storage butter is from one to six months old when offered for retail trade the next class of butter is dairy butter usa so it is made on a farm it usually made from unpasteurized sour cream which has not been standardized for acidity. This butter generally has a sour flavor due to the high acid content of the cream. The last class of butter is creamery butter. So creamery butter made in a creamery or dairy factory. It is more in form in quality than a dairy butter now composition of butter 
Again, according to Prevention of Food Adulteration Rules 1976, table or creamery butter should contain not less than 80% fat, not more than 1.5% curd and not more than 3% common salt. So this particular table shows the composition of Indian butter. So constituent and percentage. So in Indian butter, butter fat is in 80.2%. It has a moisture content of 16.3%. It contains 2.5% salt and curd about 1.0%. So the standards for composition of butter are prescribed either as 80% fat or 16% moisture content. Food and nutritive value of butter. So the butter is very high in fat and fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E and vitamin K. method of manufacturer packaging and storage of butter so from this slide we will study the basic flow chart of manufacturer manufacture of butter so in the first slide in this slide we have shown some unit operations while processing the cream for butter manufacturing so in dairy plant either cream or milk is received this received milk or cream has to gone through four stages that is grading weighing sampling and testing in order to maintain the quality of plant and in order to pay the um, milk vendor or farmers from which milk is bad on the basis of quality so if the butter is made from milk this milk has to be separated into cream and skim milk for that it goes through various steps like preheating then this raw milk or whole milk is preheated at a temperature of 35 to 40 degrees celsius after preheating this milk is passed through the centrifugal separator where this centrifugal separator separates the cream and skim milk so the desired uh, raw material for butter manufacturing is cream is obtained which is then standardized so if the cream is received into the plant it again goes through these four operations that is grading it is graded into first grade cream then second grade cream and reject grade cream the first grade cream is sweet or slightly slower sour second grade cream is sour and coagulated while rejected grade cream is markedly sour and fermented so in this way the these four operation is done on either on milk or a cream then if the cream is received it is neutralized So what do you mean by neutralization of cream? So neutralization of sour cream for butter making refers to a partial reduction in its acidity. The objects or purposes of neutralization of cream are to avoid excessive fat loss in butter milk that results from churning highly acid pasteurized cream. The second objective of neutralization of cream is to guard against the production of an 
undesirable of flavor in cream which may result when high acid cream is pasteurized the next objective is to improve the keeping quality of butter made from high acid cream salted acid butter develops a fishy flavor during commercial storage at minus 23 to minus 29 degree celsius or minus 10 to minus 20 degree fahrenheit after neutralization of cream the cream is standardized so what do you mean by standardization standardization of cream is nothing but the adjustment of the fat level in the cream to the desired percentage conforming to standard requirements so in this case the fat level is adjusted to the 35 to 40% that the cream should contain 35 to 40% fat in it and it is done by using the standardization process then the cream which is standardized for 35 to 40% fat is then pasteurized at 82 to 88 degree celsius for that is non hold process the pasteurization of cream refers to the process of heating every particle of cream to not less than 71 degree celsius or 160 degree fahrenheit and holding it at such a temperature for at least 20 minutes or to any suitable temperature time combination so in this process flow chart we have used temperature of 82 to 88 degree celsius using approved and properly operated equipment so the pasteurization of cream is done to destroy the pathogenic microorganism to destroy undesirable microorganisms to complete the neutralization process to eliminate some of the gaseous tainting substances to make possible the removal of some volatile of flavors during vac creation so the pasteurization is basically no hold that is continuous process or vac creation may be done vac creation is nothing but the type of pasteurization which is done under vacuum therefore it is called as vac creation so this is also a continuous process so the initial cream takes place and the fat taste may be lowered by 6 to 8% in this vac creation this fact has to be kept in view when standardizing cream so after vac creation or pasteurization and before aging the cream is cooled to a 20 to 22 degree celsius and after cooling it it is then ripened the ripening of cream refers to the fermentation of cream with the help of, of desirable starter cultures the objects of ripening of cream is to produce butter with a pleasing pronounced characteristics flavor and aroma uniformly from day to day the second object of ripening of cream is to obtain exhaustive churning that is low fat loss in butter milk so this after ripening the cream is sent for so aging is nothing but the ripened cream in which the uh, culture is added for fermentation is kept for some time for a resting period at a temperature of 5 to 10 degree celsius after aging the cream is sent for churning so this is one of the most operations while manufacturing butter so 
What is churning? Churning of cream consists of agitation at a suitable temperature until the fat globules adhere, forming larger and larger masses and until a relatively complete separation of fat and serum occurs. So the exact meaning of churning is to we share and tear or the cream so that the larger fat globules form these fat globules has added buttermilk to them for that purpose washing is done the purpose of washing is to remove all loose buttermilk adhering to butter grain so as to reduce the curd content so curd content means unwashed butter grains contain about 1.1 to 1.5 percent curd while normal washed butter has a curd content of 0.6 to 1.0 percent in order to reduce the curd content of butter we wash it thereby improving its keeping quality the also the washing is done to correct defects in the firmness of butter by proper adjustment of wash water temperatures and also to decrease the intensity of certain of flavors in case of poor quality cream so washing is done by using clean water having temperature 1 to 2 degree celsius so this temperature should be lower than the churning temperature of cream and an amount equal to the quantity of buttermilk removed so the quality of wash water should be physically clean and bacteriologically and chemically safe it is best to use freshly pasteurized and cooled cream cooled water after washing that is after removing buttermilk from the uh, fat globules the salting and working is done salting is refers to the addition of salt to butter the basic reasons behind adding salt is to improve keeping quality of butter to enhance taste and to increase overrun the amount and quality of salt added at the rate of 2 to 2.5 percent of butter fat the quality of salt should be good and it should be free from any extraneous matter and germs if you add salt in excess amount this will damage the flavor of butter the amount of salt added to butter in a jar is calculated by using some procedure so there are various method of salting in some cases dry salt is added in some cases wet salt is added in that case it is called as wet salting then third one is the brine salting and the la so in this way by various methods we add salt into the butter so after adding so after adding salt working is done on the fat globules so this refers to the kneading of butter the purpose of working is to completely dissolve informed distributed and properly incorporate the salt also to ex to expel butter milk and to control the moisture content of butter working is to be done on the fat globules which is formed during the churning process the the third objective of the working is to fully incorporate the added makeup water in butter and 
the last object or purpose of working is to bring the butter grains together into a compact mass for convenient handling and packaging. So the working should be continued until the butter has a compact body, a closely knit grain, a tough waxy texture and an even distribution of salt and moisture. There should be no free moisture on the trier plus drawn from the butter. So the air content of butter is important because it affects the density of butter, its microbial spoilage and its oxidative spoilage. After salting and working, packaging and storage operations are performed. So first one is the packaging. So before packaging we remove butter from the churn. This is done either manually or by gravity or by mechanical means. In the so the types of packs used for packaging butter is bulk or wholesale in which in boxes, tubes, casks, etc. are used and in retail packaging 1, 2, 4, 8, 16 or 25, 50, 100, 250, 500 gram pads are used. Also in collapsible metal tubes it is packed. So the object of packaging the packaging offers protection against contamination and damage that is mutilation also it protects the butter against loss in weight and degradation or deterioration of flavor it also provides ease and safety of, of transport it also provides a convenient form of disposal and it is used to identify the contents and in increase sales, appeal, appearance, etc. So various packaging materials are used. This includes wood or timber, parchment paper or substitute, then aluminum foil or laminates, tin plate cans, etc. So after packaging the butter stored in cold storage. The temperature of commercial cold storage of butter ranges from minus 23 to minus 29 degree Celsius that is minus 10 degree Fahrenheit to minus 20 degree Fahrenheit. There is invariably some flavor deterioration of butter while it is in commercial cold storage. Sometimes a fishy flavor develops in salted acid butter Bacterial deterioration plays a neg negligible part while chemical degradation plays a leading one. So in this way we have covered the process flowchart of butter manufacturing in detail. So in this particular video lecture we covered the introduction about the worldwide production of butter and then history of butter after that we studied about the definition then PFA according to the PFA rules we also studied definition how much constituents in how much percent should be present in the butter then in detail we studied the various operations that to be followed while manufacturing the butter in the next video lecture we will continue with the remaining process flowcharts of dairy and dairy products thank you